to the layout. The work with the scenery continues, so I thought I would share my progress with you. At this end of the layout, the pier terminal still hasn't really had any work done on it. Still need to sort the roof, the roof vents and the lighting and a little bit more of the interior. It was sort of temporarily placed there on the layout and that's where it stayed since. But in the meantime, I have finished the crane, uh, made a start on the water. So that is going to be paint with polyurethane varnish over the top and then some kind of uh, wave effect from either Woodland Scenics or Dulux Materials. But doing it in the traditional way, um, a, a base coat of paint and then building up many, many layers of polyurethane varnish. That's the way it always used to be done. I've got time on my side. Um, layout's not due to be shown until November, so I've got plenty of time for various coats of varnish to uh, get the water effect that I want. I'm aware there's plenty of uh, options for water, uh, two-part resin and the sorts that you, you, you pour and leave. Um, wasn't very keen on that. I've only got one chance to get it right and mix it correctly and if the weather is not quite right doesn't dry properly i'd have to uh, sort of dam the front of the layout uh, to stop it all rolling off the front of the board i just thought for uh, simplicity i would use the traditional method of uh, of varnish so we'll see how that goes uh, i've got plenty of coats of that to do so that'll keep me occupied for the next week I've been having issues with this B&O boxcar. Um, the wheel set was magnetic and it was getting itself caught on the uncoupling magnets. So I thought I would purchase myself a set of KD 33 inch wheels. Uh, thought what could possibly go wrong. I fitted those and uh, the car refuses to, refuses to roll at all now. Um, the wheels just, just drag and barely go round. So, uh, on closer inspection, uh, the standard wheels that came from Exact Rail seem to have quite a, uh, a narrow point, a uh, narrow pinpoint, and the uh, KD replacement wheel sets seem to have a slightly, uh, slightly larger uh, sort of cone. Um, I guess that's the NMRA 60 degree standard that they, they specify, um, and maybe Exact Rail don't, don't follow that. So I have purchased myself a set of axle bearing reamers. Uh, these are from DCC Concepts. Um, I know uh, Micromark do their own, but that's quite expensive. Uh, no one in the UK seems to stock it. So that would be a job to get from America. And uh, I thought I would try the slightly more cost effective DCC Concepts uh, version first. I did also look to see if I could find Barber S2 friction bearing uh, 50 ton trucks uh, as replacements, but it only seems that, that Exact Rail um, supply those. Um, whether or not they do a non magnetic version now, um, not been able to find them in stock in the UK either. Uh, that sort of thing isn't very, uh, very cost effective to, to get shipped across from the US. So. We'll just try reaming them out first, and if that fails, then I will need to look at replacement trucks. Right, I've had a go with the axle reamer. Um, seems to have made a slight improvement. Uh, the car doesn't roll particularly well, but um, at least the wheels go round now, which was better than what they were doing before. And uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to need to put any more foam on the axle to uh, put a bit of rolling resistance on it. Um, no, it, it it does seem to work okay. So we'll uh, we'll go with that for the time being. The spur off to uh, the rest of the uh, the port area has been ballasted. Uh, did that in the uh, good old fashioned traditional wet it down and then PVA through an eyedropper just a mix of different ballasts to uh, give a bit of variation 
I uh, also noticed that uh, the glue had sort of sat on top of the sleepers and made them quite shiny. So I've been back over those with the, uh, the paint pen. I finally made up my mind how I wanted the rails to look in the street. I've put them straight down the middle of the street and built the road up around them. So that's the uh, setup that I've, I've settled on. I also need to work out the order in which I like the buildings along the back of the layout. Uh, this is possibly the, the setup I'm going to go for. Um, a newer building on the end of the row makes more sense to me. So I'm going to put that sort of more, slightly more modern style building at the end. Um, maybe some land was reclaimed and, and that was built. Um, and then the sort of more original, uh, earlier architecture style buildings, a little bit further up the street, a uh, bit, bit older development. Um, I've been swapping those two buildings around, can't decide which way I, I like them. Um, I kind of like the tall building, then the slightly lower building, and then the taller building, uh, rather than having sort of everything the same height. It's a little bit difficult with the uh, DPM kits because they're modular, so sort of everything does look the same. But all those buildings, they need roof detail, um, fire escapes and, and the like. So they're certainly not finished, but uh, they're good enough to sort of temporarily place on the layout. My current idea for the cab company uh, is to extend the yard sort of a little bit further behind the building, um, have the, the building on a sort of fairly large plot of land, but only actually be, be quite a small building with, with a bit of outside space. So uh, I need to work out what I'm going to use for the surface of the, uh, the sort of backyard. I've run out of light grey foam now, don't have enough to do that area. And I'm not really keen on doing it the same sort of asphalt colour that I've done the road. So I'm going to need to have a think about what I want to do at the rear of the building. But I do want cars being worked on. Uh, maybe a little fuel tank out there with, with someone gassing up his taxi and cleaning windows. And I don't know, uh, like I say, I want, I want people sort of working on, on cars there and make that a, a little bit of a focal point being uh, being a car guy but what I also have uh, is some fencing to uh, to go around the uh, go around the building um, I think there's enough in that pack uh, laying it out roughly to, to do what I want to do so once I've decided what I want uh, on the surface of the yard I can get on and install the fence and then the uh, the rest of the ground uh, behind there and uh, between here and the uh, uh, the pier will be sort of waste ground, rough ground, um, grass, scrub, dirt. I, I do like to have open spaces on my layouts. Um, nothing is packed in to a point where uh, there isn't any space. There's always space that's uh, too small for anything useful. Um, but uh, always always find waste ground everywhere and I, I do like sort of modeling space it does seem to make a layout look much more realistic just moving the cab company out of the way uh, with the grocery distributor I have decided to put in another unconnected spur track uh, just to make use of the loading dock on the opposite side of the building uh, there is room between the box car and the, the main line, so to speak, uh, for cars to pass. So just put a little bit of ballast and weathered that track up and put a few weeds in there. And uh, we'll need a bumper or some rail end wheel stops. But yeah, quite happy with how the grocery distributor looks in that corner. In preparation for the static grass, I've painted uh, the bare ply, just a bit of brown poster paint just to uh, make sure there's no bare wood showing through. And what I've also done is with some brown craft sand, uh, just gone around the edges um, of anywhere there's going to be a grass area, um, just so I can 
thin the grass out towards the edge and have a bit of a uh, bit of bare earth so with that I need to sort out the base for the cab company and then I can crack on with the static grass machine right that's the static grass applicator put away and I've finished the front of the layout so this whole area is just going to be some waste ground so I've built up a couple of three different layers using the WWS static grass applicator and using different blends of their grass just to give a, a rough look to the area and just a little bit on the spur track I don't want it to look completely disused just uh, not very well kept so to wrap this episode up I'll give you a quick overview of the layout quite pleased with how the grass has turned out temporarily I've just popped in the dock edge it of course does need its pilings um, assembling as well so they'll go in last I will be doing another few coats of polyurethane varnish before I uh, stick on a water effect from Woodland Scenics or Dulux Materials some sort of ripple effect the uh, fenced in cab company just put some figures in there just to uh, see how it looks so thanks for joining me and uh, I'll see you soon.